Well, we do appreciate Steve Gellis from Primo 116 here in the Hampton Road Show this morning. We appreciate you coming here because we know you've got a busy few days ahead for yes, we you. Do. Yeah, we're pretty much booked up, which is nice. That is, it's a it's nice great. problem to have. It is. But it is an early start this morning, and we appreciate <laughs> you coming here to make a wonderful butternut squash risotto, an award-winning recipe, by the way. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. It's great. Great stuff. Okay, what we have is we've got the risotto, mm -hmm. which is a short grain rice from Italy, from the Po Valley, actually, which is up north of uh, Bologna and uh, and uh, Florence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, it's a it has a lot of starch, and it'll take us about 30, 40 minutes to cook it. Right. But we're going to start it with some diced bacon. Ooh, you said it. You said the magic word. We'll get the bacon going. Normally, when you do a risotto, you just do a yellow onion mm -hmm. and some olive oil. But this recipe that I came up with... You're going to need... Has, well, we're going we're gonna to render out this a little bit, okay. and we'll start it. <clears throat> the bacon gives it a smoky flavor to it, and then the sweetness of the uh, caramelized squash just works real well with the pork dish. So Very we're nice. going to put the uh, pork cheeks on here today that, we, uh, that I cooked in the restaurant last night. Now, I think you're going to have to explain the pork cheeks, because these are all recipes that you've gotten kudos from, from yes. different places. Yes, that's <laughs> it is. These are, these are the actual cheeks right here. Um, <laughs> pork cheeks, do that? yes, pork cheeks. Pork. They're not the jowls, just the cheek meat. But this recipe lends itself that you can use any pork, any pork cut. So you can use a uh, pork shoulder and chunk it and braise it as well, or um, you can use the uh, short ribs. Anything will work with it. Any pork dish because you do have the bacon and the smokiness of the bacon working in it. And now we can add some uh, chopped shallots in here. Okay, right over here, all of it. Dump the and whole thing I in. love it when you bring the big pot. The big pot. These are cooking something great that can sh that we can share. And you've got, we've got a lot of folks in the audience. So. Yes, we do. <laughs> and we'll cook the shallots till they get soft and clear, but not till they brown. We don't want to caramelize the shallots, so we'll just get those going a little bit in here. And uh, we've got some heat in this pan. We'll put the butter in here. All this butter? Sure. Okay. We're living living large. I for agree. Valentine's Day, right? We'll let the uh, butter start to brown a little bit, and then we're going to put the squash in, the butternut squash, mm -hmm. we'll put some salt and pepper on it, and we'll let that slowly caramelize so we can get some butter melted. Okay, so you haven't done anything other than dice these all up. I, right, all I did was uh, skin the squash and then diced it. Okay. It's that simple, and then we're going to cook it slowly with some salt and pepper and get it nice and sweet, bring the sugars out of the uh, squash. Now the risotto, for some folks, can be the big challenge part, and that's like the, the key ingredient for this dish, I know. I agree. But it's, once you do it a few times, it's very simple. Because next what we're going to do is, now the shallots are almost ready. And the risotto takes this chicken stock. And we have chicken stock simmering. And it's, and it's a continual, continually adding the stock to the risotto to get the risotto to release its starch and get nice and creamy. So it just takes time. And you just got to watch it and keep stirring it. And you wouldn't, like, do it all at once, right? I mean, you do the gradual, you, where you add the chicken right. stock, we're gonna add it, part. we're going to add it in stages, so it gets absorbed each time. It's not like when you make regular white rice or anything, where you just put a lot of water in it, put the lid on it, let it sit. Mm -hmm. This one takes a little work. And watching over the pot. Yes, watching over okay the pot. And that's okay this time. It is. That's a good thing. We can put the, uh, we can put the, the rice in. The rice in? Yes. All right, let's do that. You got it? We are almost running out of time, okay. but I want to see this in. rice go just in. Just dump it all, all in. of it? All of it. And then do we start with the chicken stock? Well, first what we're going to do is we're going to mix it a little bit so it gets some oil on it, mm -hmm. and, and we toast it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then we'll, uh, first we'll deglaze with white wine, and then we'll start with the chicken stock. Okay, we're going to come back and talk more about this, okay. Steve Gallus. Thanks very much. We'll work on this, and then work on our butternut squash coming up in the next yes, segment, right? we will. Sounds good. I am attempting to help. Chef Steve Gellis from Prima 116 this morning. We're making butternut squash risotto. And here's the risotto. Keep stirring. Keep stirring. So that's, that's good. That's all I can do. Now, what you did is you put some white wine in here once uh, you had the once rice. We to once we toasted the, the arborio rice, correct, then we uh, deglazed with white wine first. And now we just keep going. That's it. Make sure we don't get that stuck on the bottom. I'm not Cheryl. doing a good job here because it can't <laughs> stick. And then we keep adding uh, chicken stock as it keeps getting absorbed until it finally absorbs no more and it's al dente, and then uh, we'll add everything else to it. You said something to me though. I mean, you're, I'm seeing the creaminess, and right. that's exactly what the, you want. The starch releases out of the rice as it as it keeps cooking. I'll lower the right. heat so you don't have a, so much of a problem. I don't want anyone in the audience to complain about our cooking. So you know, <laughs> I want none of that. Continue to keep uh, putting in some chicken stock, uh, and you put in the butternut. 
squash. Butternut squash we put into the saute pan with, with butter and salt and pepper. Uh, aggressively salt and peppered it, and we're just going to keep cooking it till it caramelizes and the sugars get released out of the uh, out of the squash. You know, you've gotten so many kudos from your recipes. How, how just how do you come up with them? I mean, they're well, simple, first of all. They are. They're straightforward, and I take the basic recipes of of, uh, of Italian cooking and sometimes tweak them a little bit mm -hmm. to what I think would work a little bit better with a certain dish. Mm -hmm. But they are pretty much traditional in uh, in the recipe itself. For Valentine's Day weekend, I know. Um, you will be a busy guy, that is for sure. Yes. Folks, of course, need to make reservations if yes. they want to come out to Primo 116. Yes, we recommend well, what, reservations. What kinds of things are you going to have on the menu for those folks who already have a seat at your table? Well, we're going to, we've been running this dish through the month of January since, oh, this since, one? I, yes, since we won the awards at the, uh, at the Signature, Signature Chefs. Chefs. Mm -hmm. Correct. But I'm also going to do a, um, a tenderloin of beef with uh, a demi glace, and I'm going to have lobster tail scampi with that, with a uh, lemon thyme risotto. Sounds really, really good. So those will be the two dishes. And I this need dish. more? Uh, we need more, yes. Okay. I think so. I'll stop talking. I think I'm getting an eye because I can tell. Oh, you are? I'm not really. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming. <laughs> That's right, though. All right, That's not so what we need to do. What are we waiting for now? Are we waiting We're going to wait for this to caramelize that? some more. Then I'm going to chop uh, some fresh chives mm -hmm. and some parsley, which we'll put into, it, into the uh, risotto when we finish it. And we'll also put a little more butter into the risotto as well. Mm -hmm. How far away you think are we from being done uh, with this? Probably about 15 minutes. Okay, so still more adding of the chicken stock, yes. more caramelizing, because you I'll want it kind of al, dun al dente. Al you know, dente, right. Earlier. Just a little bit al dente. All right, very good. Well, when we come back then, we still have a little bit, we're waiting on a little bit of stuff to come together, but we'll be able to put all of that up. Yes. Put it all together coming up in our next we'll segment. time it so it all comes together. And I know you will. Sounds good. Chef, thanks. Thank you. Finishing up our butternut squash risotto with Steve Gallus from Primo 116. See, this looks done to me. Uh, it is uh, just about. Here's my spoon. You need to test it though to see that it's okay. al dente and uh, mm -hmm. close. Mm. Mm, I see what you mean. All right, so you can still taste mm -hmm. a little bit of bite to it. A little it. bit of crunch. A little crunch like to too it. Too much. Exactly. A bit. Right. You ever get nervous about making risotto? Initially, I did when I first started because I'd make a big pot of it at the restaurant, mm -hmm. and then I was worried about serving individual servings throughout the. Uh, throughout dinner service and um, I came up lot. with the, it is, and I didn't want to overcook it so I came up where I, I cooked it about 90% of the way and then I hold it and then I cooked each order. I finished it with a little more stock a couple uh. more times in the saute pan and finished it out and that way I didn't have it overcooked. Right. So it worked out really well. Now folks probably won't have that kind of volume that they do in their uh, own kitchen. <laughs> that's but if a lot they right, do. That's a lot right there. <laughs> <laughs> Would you add more chicken stock then? Well, we'll put okay. a little bit more. We're going to fire it up, put a little bit more in it when we put the uh, butternut in it, and then we're going to finish it with a little bit of uh, roasted garlic uh, compound butter as well. Yum, yum, yum. Mm, this is a good dish. Now, the butternut squash here, you were looking for some caramelization. Yes, it's gotten browner. Notice how it's gotten browner? Yeah. And you can taste it, and it'll, okay, be, and it'll be sweet. And this is done. And the natural sugars have come out in the, mm. uh, in the squash. See how sweet? Yeah. Nice with the butter. Delicious. Salt and pepper, and then we'll. You can. You want to dump those in? Yeah. Dump it in. Absolutely. Go ahead. I'll give you a hand. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Very very nice. And is there any heat right now on the risotto? Pardon me. Any heat right now under the risotto? No, I don't have any. But we're gonna. You can mix that in, and we can also mix the chives. Oh, no, the next no. one. That's the parsley. There we go. That was an oh, important difference, right? It's a, it's a big difference. Dump the whole thing in. Whole thing. There you go. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. And then and stir. Then stir. Okay. Do that. Now you're giving. You're not giving us the recipe yet for this award-winning dish. No. This right is ba now. well. Basically, this is. It's very simple. It's it's braising meat. So basically, you're going to brown it and then make a mirepoix and then uh, some stock. Mm. What was that? Was that? Mirepoix. Mirepoix. You've talked about that before. It's, yeah, it's the holy trinity. You've got <laughs> carrot, onion, and celery. That's right. And then some uh, chicken stock, a little bit of white wine, and uh, tomato paste. And then just cook it for about four hours, and you're, and you're there. <laughs> and then you're there, like that. It's that easy. <laughs> it's all the, the building blocks. That's though. what it is. It's building layers of flavor, which is what you're looking for. Okay. And that's starting to look good. It With is. The yellow of the squash and the green of the uh, chives. And, I mean, you really kind of want the... You want it to meld together. Yes. You don't you want, want the chunks. Well, yeah, sort of. You know, depends. Depends if you overcook the squash and it'll break apart. If not, you'll have little nice cubes in there. Mm, okay. Either way, it's all good. It, either way. 
Correct. <laughs> so how do you serve this up? Because I know well, we're not quite done yet. But. No. What we'll do is we'll serve it in a bowl. We'll mm -hmm. put the risotto down first, and then we'll plate the uh, cheeks on right on top of the uh, on top of the risotto, and we'll finish it with some chopped flat leaf parsley. Okay. So wait, there was another step that I missed. You've got the parsley going parsley, in there? Parsley will put on the top at the end. Over at the end. Mm -hmm. And then, so this is almost done. What almost else do we done. need to do before we can be completely finished? We're going to need to put a little bit of more stock. Okay. Can I do that now, we're going to need to put some, yeah, a ladle full would be nice. Okay. And then we're going to finish it with a little bit of roasted garlic compound butter. That, that sounds made. heavenly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really does. You can basically put this on anything you want, and it'll t probably taste good. Probably put it on a tire, and it'll probably <laughs> eat well. Don't have to try that, but I, I believe it probably would be the case. So it'll take a big old chunk of butter. Chef, we're Come running up. out of time, so we're going to add that here, and then we're going to taste it all before the end of the show. Yes, we will. It'll be all good. Primo 116, where is it located again for folks who want to come 116 West out? Washington Street in uh, Old Town, Suffolk. It is a charming location. Thanks very much. Great to have you here again. Thanks.